If you're interested in becoming a professional jet broker, go to jetlifearrow.com forward slash sell jets for more information. This is just a piece of our online boot camp and our in person boot camp to help you get successful ASAP as a professional jet broker. All right, let's talk about the sales framework. This is how this it literally is the framework. It's the mindset, it's the how you organize your sales so that when things don't go right, you can diagnose the problem. You're a helicopter pilot, right? Yeah, and I have my airplane commercial. Okay, okay. So in the airplane, like when I was getting taught how to land the airplane, my instructor didn't just say, go land the airplane. You know, he's like, okay, we're gonna work on landings. Okay, that includes your approach. That includes your round out. That includes, you know, losing ground effect. That includes flaring and touchdown and continuing on, fly the plane all the way down to the to the to the hangar, basically. So when I would come in, and then I would just hang out there, and then I would just pancake onto the floor. What went wrong? All right, my approach was off. My round out was too high. I just lost ground effect and just. Pfft, plopped on there and now I can diagnose okay next time don't round out so early or next time like add a little bit of power before you just flop down there and then you can have time for your flare so this is what the framework does for us in sales it helps us understand when something doesn't go wrong when something doesn't go right we can diagnose this and then when something does go right we can pinpoint that and duplicate that so the sales framework on your bootcamp uh, workbook we've got the greeting the fact finding the demo and the close this page on page 12 um, is what you'll fill in later so we're, I'm gonna just gonna go over this and then we're gonna go to page 13 and we're gonna come back to 12 so the greeting it, it really is the hook it's that first getting on the phone with someone it's that first 20 to 30 seconds you know hey Bob Tom jet life arrow good morning they respond, good morning. Hey, the reason for the call is blah, blah, blah. No, I'm not interested. Getting past what we call RDRs, reactionary defense responses. And then we go into the fact finding, which is asking good questions, having a good conversation. Majority of your phone calls in the beginning are gonna just hang out in the greeting. Then you're gonna get better and you're gonna hang out more in the fact finding. Then you're gonna spend time there to have good conversations with people and then you're gonna get more confident and you're gonna transition into the demo. The demo is where you have an opportunity to share with them what you do and why you're different. And then we get into the close and we finally ask them for the sale, ask them for the listing. Now we're gonna, the goal is to get through the close even if they're not interested and do it in such a way that you come off as professional but not pushy. Okay, the goal isn't to just slam down their throats like, hey, we're gonna get to the close, we're gonna get to the close, we're gonna get to the close. That's not the goal, we're not, that's not how we use sales. We're in the relationship building uh, business. And so the close might just be, hey, if I understand you're super busy right now, if I send you a market report, you know, what's a good email address for you? That's a great close, okay? Um, or, you know, we might get all the way through to the demo and, and be able to go from there, so. That is the greeting, the hook, the demo, the close. That is the, the overall framework that we're gonna work with. Any questions there? Yep. yep. Okay. So, what does this look like when you fill it out? Like I mentioned, the greeting. Hey Bob, Tom, Jet Life Arrow, good morning. Good morning. The reason for the call is I wanted to see if you'd be in the market for an upgrade on your Citation Excel. If I found you the perfect replacement and I could bring you a retail buyer for 986 Delta Sierra. No, I'm not really interested. Those are the objections. Now, these objections, they're not true objections. They're what we call reactionary defense responses. They're the time when you go into Best Buy and someone's like, hey, can I help you? You're like, no, I'm just looking. You probably went to Best Buy for something, dude, okay? Whether it's a video game, batteries, TV, you're probably there for some reason. You just don't want to talk to somebody right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you're you're interrupting this guy's day. So the RDR is just a push off and it usually only comes down to three different things. I'm busy, I'm not interested or I love my jet. And so it's your job here to kind of figure out what it is and respond appropriately. So if they're busy, you can say something like, no problem, I'm with you. 
w other than right now, when is a better time for us to talk? All right. If they are not interested, no problem. I hear you. The number one rule, and it says that right there, is always agree. Interested, no problem. I hear you. Most people on call today aren't interested because their wife won't let them sell the jet. Is that a problem for you too? <laughs> no, I could sell my jet if I wanted to. Great. I'm, and now we've transitioned into the fact finding part. Okay. Or no, I'm not interested. I love my jet. Great. I love to hear that. Sounds like you got to really dial in. Hey, are you a pilot yourself? Chances on the excels and the bigger bodies, they're probably not pilots, but they might be. And mm -hmm. so it might still be worth it asking or, you know, Hey, sounds like it's really, you know, dialed in. How long have you had it for? Or what's the last, what's the last upgrade you did to it? You know, something like that to just kind of transition transitions into some sort of a fact finding. So that's where majority of your stuff will, will be when you first start out. So put it another way, we want to find, we want to use this time in the fact finding to find out more about the owner. And we want to use this time to find out about the jet itself. So how do we transition into the fact finding? You know, we hit them with something like this again. Now we're on page 14. Identify why they'd want to sell. Hey, I know you weren't thinking about selling, but if there was one reason why you'd want to sell a jet, what would it be? And ask a few questions. Identify behaviors. Let me ask you, how come you haven't listed your jet for sale yet? So if they if they talk about why they would want to and they really get into it, oh hey, let me ask, why haven't you sold it yet? Other than yourself, who else is involved and responsible making the decision to sell the jet? I'm the only one. Great. Okay. Besides you. Who else is going to influence the decision? Your wife, your partner, your pilot, and then ask if they brought, you know, worked with a broker before. So these questions are, are almost more questions like, you, you, you're like these are these are these are fact finding questions about selling the jet. Before we get to questions about selling the jet, we need to find out about the owner and find out about the jet. So the student workbook is good for when you're ready to talk about selling the jet. This is better for when we're t just having a conversation. Gotcha. So again, Dylan, good morning. I'm sorry, Dylan, Tom with Jet Life Aero. Good morning. Good morning. The reason for the call is I wanted to see if you'd be ready to, for an upgrade on your Excel if I could find your perfect replacement and bring your retail buyer. No, I'm not interested. No problem, Dylan. I hear you. Calling a lot of owners today. They're not interested because their wife won't let them sell their jet. Is that a problem for you? No, no, that's not a problem for me. You know, oh man, good. I'm glad to hear that. Hey, just out of curiosity, you know, where are you guys based out of? You know, or hey, and I, and I use these transition words, just out of curiosity. You know, I was wondering. You know, you don't want to sell. Great, no problem. A lot of guys are in the same position. And what, what kind of what line of work are you in that you can afford a jet? You know, and then you're going to read them. They might just be like, "F off." And you're like, "Hey, cool, okay, no problem. I hear you." Listen, I know you're you weren't even thinking about your your jet right now. I know you weren't expecting my call, but can I send you a market report so next time we talk, you know, it's a little, you're you're a little bit more ready. Or I don't like that. I don't like saying you're more prepared. But hey, can I send you a market report so you see what your jet is worth? Okay, sure, whatever. You know, they kind of brush you off there. Your get out of jail free card, and I think I have it up here. Thanks for speaking for me. I have a market report I'd love to send you. Is this the best number to text it to? Or no problem, I'll follow up with you in a few months if anything changes. So this is in Notion. This is under the boot. Uh, this is under the scripts. If you need it, if you need to print it out, it is there. But if they're all be if they're being all cranky and stuff, she's like, hey, whoa, 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 listen, I know you weren't expecting this call. I don't want to wait. I'm not here to waste your time. I want to be respectful of your time. I'd love to send you a market report on the citations excels. Done. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Then if they'll stay on the phone with you, because there's three reactions. When you call, there's gonna be three reactions that you're gonna get. Number one, Dylan, thank you for calling. I was hoping somebody would call me today. I was hoping a stranger would ask me to list my $4 million jet for them. <laughs> yes. Let's talk. Tell me more. Okay, that's one option. Option two is click. 
nothing you can do about click yeah okay that's that's flying in you know below minimums never should have attempted the landing nothing you can do about it it's not going to work now option three is i'm not interested but they don't hang up if they don't hang up then you've got a shot Right. Now you can try and you can try and be all cool and sleazy and like, hey man, oh awesome dude, like no nah, no problem. If you don't like what I have to say, I'll hang up on myself. But if they don't hang up on you, this is your opportunity to pitch yourself. You know, take a step back. They haven't hung up on you, okay? They're like they're basically saying, hey, I'll give you a shot. So what can you do to grab their attention? So then we ask them in the fact finding, you know, find out more about the owner, find out the chat, you know. Hey, where you guys? Where you guys? Where you guys flying all that? You know, what have you done? Avionics? You've done any upgrades? What did you upgrade from? Because this is probably not their first jet. Man, Citation Excels. I love these. I'm so glad that you love yours too. What did you upgrade from? What did you have before this? You fly this thing? Uh, if they're pilots and they're into it, hey, dude, tell me about the performance. This thing's supposed to go 433 knots. Are you seeing that? You know. And we're just having a flowing conversation. And then after the flowing conversation, you can kind of lean in a little bit. This is like a trial close. I know you're not looking to sell, but if you were, what would be one reason why you would sell? And now we've moved from the conversation about the owner, about the jet, and now we're talking about the possibility of selling, okay? <clears throat> and then from there, you know, you might ask if there was one reason, you know, a lot of opportunity there for something bigger, faster. Why haven't you sold yet? You know, when you when you bought your Excel, did you work with a broker? Okay. Other than yourself, who else is responsible for making the decision? Okay. A transition that I'll use, and you can see it on your workbook. I know you weren't thinking about selling your jet today, and I appreciate you taking just a few minutes uh, of time to speak with me. Do you have 60 seconds for me to just share with you what I do? Izzy does a good job with this. He says... I kind of changed mine. Do you have, I know you weren't looking to sell, but could you spare 60 seconds for me to share with you what we do? That's easy. You know, you've been talking for two, three, four minutes. You know, Dylan, you know, I pre listen, I know you're a super busy guy. I know you weren't thinking about selling your jet for me, a jet right this moment, but do you have 60 seconds for me just to share with you what we do or who I am, who I'm not, what we do for owners like yourself? Or can I just share with you what we do and why, when it comes time to selling, you might want to consider working with us, however you want to put it. We, and then we go into the demo. Before I show you all the benefits of listing with me, my listing agreement is for 120 days and it's a 6% commission based on the sale of the price. Now you're in a price point where you might want to, you know, in, like change that a little bit, but I always give price up front. I don't know about you, but I like price up front. If I'm talking to a salesperson, just tell me what we're talking about numbers wise. Because if you don't, all I'm gonna think about while you're telling me how great you are and how great your presentation is, all I'm thinking in my head is how much is this gonna cost? Mm -hmm. okay? So do you want me spending my bandwidth thinking about how much is it gonna cost? Or do you want me spending my bandwidth to actually pay attention to you? Right, right. yeah. So, mm -hmm. so in the demo, before I show you the benefits of listing with me, my commission is a 4% commission for 120 days exclusive listing. Now let me share with you the benefits that you get when you work with me. Number one, we target the right buyer. And this is what we went over earlier today. This is my feature, I, I'm, we target the right buyer. I am a citation expert. We sell a lot of citations. We find the right buyer for your jet, target them specifically so that your jet sells quickly at a fair price and you don't waste time because you told me earlier you don't wanna waste time selling the jet. Number two is you work, you're working with a full-time professional. I'm not a pilot with a hobby. Okay, I'm a full-time professional and I actually care about my core values. Honesty, integrity, and transparency being just a few of them. The benefit to you is that you're working with an, a broker that you can know, like, and trust. And then last but not least, one of the features of working with me is that there's no upfront cost. A lot of brokers will say there's no upfront cost, but then they hit you for photography fees they hit you for cancellation fees they hit you for listing fees listen there's no there's no risk to you it's literally 
uh, you don't pay until we sell the aircraft. So on a scale of one to 10, Dylan, one being I should have hung up on myself 60 seconds ago, and a 10 being let's, let's roll, show me the paperwork, I'm ready to list and sell, where would you put yourself? And any number they give, three, great. Three's my favorite number. I've got three boys at home. No, five, great, I've got five kids. Two, great. You know, whatever, you know, just, it's my favorite number. Just be excited. That's yeah. awesome. Alex likes to say, so you're telling me there's a chance. All right, whatever it is, great, no problem. I wanna be respectful of your, sign, of your time. I'd like to send you some more information. What's the best place to send it to? Get the email address. When's the best time to follow up? Get a date and time. Just so that it doesn't get lost in your spam. What do you need me to put in there? I'm gonna give you the market report. What else do you need to see? Listing proposal, great. An appraisal for your jet, great. Photos of my office, great. Whatever you want, I'm gonna put in the great. Okay, awesome. Hey, is there anybody else involved in the decision to list the jet that I should include in the email? Oh, my, 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 my wife. Okay, great, what's her email? Blah, 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 awesome. And then, you know, hop off the phone. But we don't just say, hey, I'll send you information, then hop off. Like, you know, we, we, try, to, we try to pin it down. But that's, I mean, that's, that's a little advanced. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I'm trying to paint you a big picture. Um, right. But yeah, that's, that's the framework. That's how this all works. And so the rest of our time is, is nailing, this, nailing this framework down. So you can go back to page 12, which is really page 13, because there's two page 12s. And, um, and, and, you know, making your, uh, you know, making your own framework and your own script. The other thing I need to men mention is I forgot to mention um, attitude. Before we get into the green, you need to have a good attitude. So I will go into phone calls literally like I just came back from lunch, I ate, I'm digesting, I'm like this. I hit dial on the phone and I'm like this. <laughs> and and, and I'll, I'll keep my eyes closed if I have to. I'm just like, even though I feel terrible, I'm like, hey, Dylan, Tom, Jet Life Arrow, good afternoon. And then I kind of wake up. But just that smile, as stupid as it look, it just it makes a difference. Um, so you got to have the attitude to make the calls. You got to have the belief to make the calls. We talked about that earlier today. Those beliefs, why they should sell, why they should sell with, with you, and why they should sell with you as an individual. You got to have those beliefs, otherwise you're not going to make the calls. And then that energy. So you have to bring the energy. You remember, you're interrupting their day. Okay? They don't owe you anything. You know, you, you, with the guy who's cranky, he's like, well, he, why wouldn't he be cranky? Like, he doesn't owe you, like, to be nice to you right now. You just interrupted his day. He was in the middle of something. He probably thought it was, like, you know, his wife wanting to talk dirty to him or something like that, and he's got you on the phone. Like, how much would that suck, <laughs> you know, if that's what you're expecting, right? <laughs> and they get you on the phone. So, um, you know, we've got to bring that energy and make it worth their time. Be fun, be engaging, be entertaining, not just, do uh, you want to sell your jet? All right, bye. Like, that's a waste of time. But if you even get him to smile, hey, Dylan, Tom, Jet Life, Arrow, good morning. Good morning. And he sounds kind of cranky. Hey, man, hope you're doing well. Wow, you sound awesome right now. The last guy I spoke on the phone sounded like he stepped on a Lego before he answered the phone. Okay, now he's like, hey, what do you want? Okay, the reason for the call is. And, and, and in, in that here, the sales framework, this is what I call an anchor, the reason for the call. Because... When they, when you call them and you say, "Hey, you know, Dylan, Tom, Jet Life Arrow, good morning," and if they don't say good morning, they say, "Hey, what's going on? How are you doing, man?" You know, you can be like, "Ah, oh, uh, like you might get stunned for a second, but we have an anchor point: the reason for the call. If you can just keep that in your mind, then you can like center yourself. The reason for the call, and then even if you have to take a breath, so you can just remember why am I calling? It's an anchor point. It's a, it's a, it's an involuntary muscle memory that keeps the thing flowing." I'm with you, I hear you, I love to hear that. This agreement stuff, it gives you time to pause. So don't feel rushed in these conversations, okay? Let it breathe. Um, any questions on the sales framework?